All right, and we are live. This is always great news. Every time you hear we're live now, this this is just beautiful. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the HTTP Packer Community Office Hours. I can actually see us in the preview window, so that means we are indeed live. So if you've been here for the past eight minutes, thank you so much for hanging out. We had some light technical troubles. Uh, our streaming solution was already on the holiday break, but we're here now. Joined today, uh, I'm joined today by Moss and Wilken, both from the Packer team or the HTTP Packer team and the Packer team. Super excited to have our first HTTP Packer and also first Packer community office hours. If you've joined us before in the audience, then you know how this goes. Uh, you can ask questions, we'll answer them for you. As you do so, please keep our code of conduct in mind. This is a professional event, even if you just go to it in your browser. Uh, be kind, be inclusive. And if you see something that you think is not cool, just tell us. Um, specifically, we want to make everyone feel comfortable. We'll crack a couple of jokes, but we won't cross a line and we ask that you don't either. With that, I would say, let's switch over to you two. Moss, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm Moss. I'm a software engineer from Brazil, but I live in Berlin. Um, I, I work at Hatchcorp for two years now, and during all this time, I worked on, Pack, on Packer. And now I'm more focused on the ATP Packer side as the team lead. Uh, I'm very glad to be here to talk about ATP Packer, and I hope I'm able to answer most of, of your questions. That's it. Beautiful. Thank you for being here. Berlin, beautiful city, always amazing. We used to do these intros where we basically grab all the cities where people are from, which is always a little bit of fun, especially if you have three different ones, which we do, because Wilken, where are you from? All right, hello everyone, hello, hello. Uh, the name is Wilken, I'm, I'm actually, I'm from New York City, born and raised in Brooklyn, but now live in Miami, Florida, where it's always sunny. Um, so, so for summer months where we have hurricane season, but. That aside, is always sunny. Uh, like um, as Karim said, yeah, my name is Wilkin. I'm one of the engineering leads on the Packer side, focusing more on the Packer core and the plugin development. Um, super happy to be here to be joining Kareem and Moss and talk about HTTP Packer and all the good stuff that's happening in the Packer world. Um, yeah, so that's it. <laughs> I'm I'm excited both of you are here. Uh, Packer is such an integral tool. Every time we talk to practitioners, people go like, you know, like how, how do I get my image from Packer and from the cloud I deploy to, to the infrastructure and the compute that I want to deploy it on? And I'm excited that, you know, for the past couple of months, we've now actually had an answer to that. But Moss, maybe you can give a good pitch to our audience. What is HCP Packer? Okay, so I will try my best. We can... If you have anything to add up, please be free. So yeah, to talk about ATP Packer, I'm first gonna talk a little bit about Packer. So Packer, with Packer, you can actually build a uh, identical image for several, uh, two several cloud platforms and with uh, only a, a single source of configuration. And with that, you can create base images for create another several images in the, at the end you have several images built into several different clouds. And it's really hard for the DevOps team to keep management of that and keep keeping track of what tools are installed in, in these images, when they were updated, where they are deployed. And this is where HTTP Packer comes in. So basically, HTTP Packer, it's a, a artifact regist registry where we keep all of the data of, of all images that were built for uh, by Packer. And I'm gonna share my screen right now because it's easier to explain if I show to you how it's Packer looks. Can you see? Me? Yeah, you can see my screen. There we go. So yeah, so HP Packer is a, it's built in in the Hashcap Cloud platform, platform. As you can see, this is the overview page. And if you click to in Packer, you're gonna see all of your images that you built with Packer. They can like be, dependencies of uh, dependent on each other. Like for example, this can be a, a base image for this one. You have everything in there. And if you see, if you go into a image bucket, 
you are able to see all of the updates that you have ever built for that image. In this case, you have a window server, and then you can create your custom labels that we go here. And in this case, we have a, the team, the team development, and you see all the updates for the, for the uh, image. Here we only have one iteration. It was built only once. If you go in, you can see for which cloud plat platform you built the, this image. In this case, we only built for Azure, but if we had also built for the same image for uh, AWS, for example, it would have another um, another table here, like like this one. And then you have all of the metadata related to this built image. Here is, is the region, the image ID, when it was created. And it, as you can see, it's uh, assigned to a channel, the development channel. And the, the channel is created by image. So this is another thing that is very nice with the HCP Packer because it's not only making it easier to manage all of the images that you have built with Packer, but it's also making it easier to query them. So from a channel, you can actually query, like you can feel safe and don't worry about the iteration details, about the image details to query what you need to build another image, to deploy another image. So this channel, you can, we, when building a typical Packer, we also uh, implemented data sources for both Packer and Terraform. And these data sources query uh, image, images, uh, metadata to be used to deploy an uh, image or create a new one. So you, you, you actually query this from using a channel. So you don't have, like if you have a pipeline and the, pip the pipeline is always using the latest iteration that is assigned to the channel development and for some reason that base image has a security issue and you have just deployed a new uh, version for the base image, you can just trigger your pipeline to update the, the dependence, the, the child images of that one and without having to worry about like the, what is the image details that you just built with the safest, um, I don't know, tool or whatever, like with the fix for the security problem. And that's it. Like uh, we are working on implementing more. The, the ATP pack is right now on public beta. It's open to everyone to use. And we are working on it. This is still, uh, we're still developing lots of new features and that's it. I'm gonna hand over to Ryukin right now because he's going to demo actually pushing those metadata and using it with the platform. So before we dive into that, I've got a couple of questions that came in. Uh, if you're following along on YouTube, feel free to ask your own questions. We'll also ask those. So while I was testing HCP Packer, um, you know, as whenever you learn new technologies, sometimes your builds don't complete. And I had a couple of did not complete um, iterations in there. What does that mean? If the iteration is not complete, it means that ATP Packer didn't receive uh, a signal from Packer that all of the builds completely successfully. Therefore, it couldn't gather all the metadata for those builds. And in the incomplete state, you can actually build again your the same iteration. And if the missing builds at the end are complete successfully, the iteration can therefore be completed and be assigned to incremental version. So basically, Packer is just being kind by telling me that I rage quit during the build and it's just saying, you, you can try this again. You got this. That's, yes. that's what I'm getting here. That, this is this is very nice. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, the other question I'm really curious about, you showed off Azure. Uh, I know AWS is in there. What other providers do we currently support for that? So we are currently supporting uh, a Azure, AWS, Docker, vSphere, and that's it. That's it. And you know where the next uh, question is going to go. How do we request new cloud providers for this? Hmm. Do you want to go? Okay. Yeah. So just to add on, we also have support for, I don't know if you said Google Cloud. Uh, oh, yeah. No, I forgot yeah. that one. GCP. Yeah. So we have, we have support for five. Um, yeah. Great question. How do we, how do we request? I think um, after, after uh, during, this is a great time actually to request this through 
through um, the GitHub issue trackers for right now. I know that we have uh, folks uh, reaching out to you know our public beta users and our customers to kind of figure out what their needs are um, and what it is that we should be prioritizing for HTTP Packer. But if you're using it now and you have some feedback, um, feel free to, to comment on the Packer GitHub issues um, and express your interest. You know, we're happy to see what the community is using and then we can take that in house and speak with our folks, figure out how to prioritize that properly. This is nice. Make your voice heard. If there's a provider that you want or need, let us know. Uh, in general, if you're using our tools, we're always open for feedback. Our GitHub issues are usually one click away, depending on if you have bookmarks or not. And, you know, let us know what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Well, can I believe you were going to show something? Uh, yeah, I'm supposed to demo. I completely forgot what I'm going to demo now. But, <laughs> um, so, <laughs> sorry, I can't agree. Well, while we think about that, yeah. I'm curious, what's the next pack release going to be like? What are we, so one question that we got the other day for how she talks uh, Germany, uh, we had somebody demo HCP Packer was, can I use JSON templates for this? And can I use JSON templates to use HCP Packer? Yeah. So great questions. And I think, you know, I, I sort of take it back a little bit then. So when we built HCP Packer, we really wanted to make it a flawless experience in the sense of like, you can take what you have now and it'll work with HCP Packer. So um, there is full support for JSON templates already. If you set a few environment variables um, for the uh, before running Packer build, a JSON build will automatically push to HCP Packer. And those three variables are AC, um, the HCP client ID, HCP client secret, and the HCP Packer underscore registry equals one. So as you sort of turn that on, right? Um, and I guess with, so, uh, and that and that will be enough. If, if I'm not mistaken, you probably need an HCP underscore Packer bucket name as well, because this is information that we don't currently capture in JSON. Uh, so setting those four environment variables should work right out the box. Um, uh, and if not, please open an issue because we will get that squared away immediately, but it should work. Um, but the, the big difference between AC, between JSON and ACL is that JSON is you get, you know, you get what you get, right? When you, when you run that build, there's no, there's no real support for customizing the metadata um, that we send to uh, ACP Packer when you're using JSON templates. So that's why we're sort of encouraging folks to move over to the ACL experience because that's really the experience that we've been optimizing for ACP Packer because it really gives us an opportunity to, to do some things um, that, we, that are just not possible to do right now on the JSON side. I think that makes a ton of sense. In general, just the HCL2 upgrade feature is probably one of my favorite things because it allows me to take yesteryear's templates and just bring them into the future. And it's, it, it is a game changer. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. We use it all the time internally. We have, as you can imagine, we have tons of JSON templates and we're just like, okay, how does it work in HCL? Let's convert and then fix some HCL2 issues. And then also figure out how things, you know, that overall experience on the JSON, I mean, on the, on the HCL2 side for converting the template. So if you haven't checked it out, please do Packer ACL2 underscore upgrade. You give it a JSON template, and we'll give you ACL goodness. So, um, please. ACL goodness is is the right term here. I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm really liking this one. I think one thing that always stuck out to me is how our tools generally have a really good upgrade experience. Uh, of course, you can't do everything perfectly, but just being able to take you know like a template that you wrote five years ago run HCL2 upgrade and now you've got the new file and it still works as long as the base image for that is still accessible is it, it is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, it removes yeah. bit rot in a good way. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So so kudos to the team to building that. They did I think yeah. Yeah, did an awesome job. Um, yeah, sorry. I have a question for Moss, but we can wait with that one if you have your demo uh, yeah. lined up. Yeah, ready to go. So, um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, all right, I'm gonna, let's see, share my screen. And I'm going to, so I'm gonna, sh 
Hmm. I have a few a few windows to share, uh, so I think it's going to look a little weird right now because I'm going to share the entire screen, and then I promise you I'll switch over, so it looks less weird. Okay. So let's uh, add this one in, and I'll get rid of our faces for now, so people can focus on the screen. Yes. And let me know. Is it sharing already? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We can see the Windows Server here. Perfect. So this is just to sort of recap where Moss left us. So here uh, we built this server early this morning. Um, this was a demo using Azure, and I'll show. I'm going to be demoing the script, the the template for this really quickly to show uh, how how this works. Uh, one of the key things, going back to your question, Kareem, about like what can we see in the next Packer release? I think the next Packer release was really more optimized for the HTTP experience and while fixing any sort of HCL uh, major issues that we've that we've come across. So one of the I nice things. I think we're always excited about that. Yeah, uh, one of the things is the ability to use um, to do uh, user generated build labels. Right, you know, before this, currently, all of this label information um, is generated by Packer. But with this next release, users will be able to set that manually using variables. Um, and I think this is really helpful because some of the feedback that we got during the initial beta, uh, private beta, was, hey, I want to be able to track the, the GUID or for, for, my, for my CI system so that I know exactly what machine built this image or what pipeline it was part of. So now we have the ability to use variables to feed in this information and add additional metadata onto our build. So that's one of the big things to look out for in the next release. Okay, so with that being said, what we're looking at here again is this version, this first successful build of this Windows server. Um, and here I've added just a few build labels, OS type version, and the idea is that we can, you know, stuff any additional metadata in there. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that window. Um, let's see. So this was a successful run of this, uh, of this build. So um, lots of green text. I'm not going to run it again just yet because it does take a little time. So maybe I'll trigger it in the background as I'm showing something else. But the general idea is that it did an Azure build. It does some nice sys prep, and and then it gives us a final image uh, that is that is stored on um, ACP Packer. So what I'm going to demo right now is the ability to create another image from this image. Uh, using the data source, and then I'm going to go into so it's basically basically just using Packer, and then I'm going to demo a Terraform uh, Azure scale set using this this base image. Now I have already built it, so I'm just going to show the plan. Uh, but I'm if I'm also happy to destroy and rebuild if it doesn't take too much time. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and switch over one more time. Let's see where we are. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so uh, quickly looking at this build template that we built that we use to build the um, the Windows Server. This is that base image. We have this. Um, we we included this is all HCL, so we included this um, bucket name, which is what's going to be called on HTTP Packer. We have some bucket labels, which is um, nice top level organizational levels to set. You know, in this case, I'm sort of showing it's this is meant for the development team. Um, in here, you can put something like billing tags or, um, you know, again, team or anything that you want to make available to the whole. It, that is, it's important to capture uh, at, the, at the very top level of, a, of an image. And then we have build labels, which in this case, I'm just using uh, version, which I'm setting manually. Um, okay. So what we want to show is... So that was my base image. I have this, this custom image uh, here on the custom image source. And what this custom image is going to do is going to create a new image based off of the Azure, I'm sorry, yeah, based off the Azure image that we already created in um, HTTP Packer. So we use the data sources for HTTP Packer. And here we have the Packer iteration, which is going to get us the, the exact iteration, the most recent iteration that is being tagged or, or pointed to by the development channel for this Windows Service bucket. And then we're going to use that information to get the actual image ID uh, or, or the actual image that's associated with that iteration. And we're, um, one of the 
big things to denote is that we have to specify a cloud provider and a region. And that's because HTTP Packard is truly cloud agnostic in the sense that we can build images from multiple cloud providers and have them stored in the same record. Um, and the big distinction be, to, to be able to tell them apart is the cloud provider and the region. So had I had a AWS image there or a GCP image, um, I would change the providers to GCP and then I would give it the, the region that that image is located in. Okay, so in the Azure Builder, there's, as you could imagine, for those who run Azure Builds, there's lots of information that gets generated for Azure. Um, and in there, we have uh, labels that we apply, these automatic labels that we generate for images. And in this case, we're using two specific labels that are part of the source image, which is the managed image name and the managed image resource name, uh, which interesting enough, I don't see it being displayed here. Oh yeah, yes it is, sorry. So um, this managed image name, and is is Wilkin test PKR. This is the sorry. This is the re, this is the uh, resource group name, and then the image name is custom window server. So, um, Azure when we build managed images, it expects a managed image name, not an actual ID in like 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 this one. So I'm gonna switch back over. Uh, okay. Uh, do, do. This, this way, yes. Okay, so so here we're grabbing that image name and that resource group, and we're gonna feed it into our new Azure build, which is custom image name, custom resource group, and then we're just going to generate a new image. I'm not, this is not another image being pushed to HTTP Packer, but if we wanted to, um, we, we could, actually, why don't we, um, let's see. Let's do ATP Packer Registry uh, bucket name equals, let's just say custom. All right. So let's see. If this works, as expected, we should have another image on um, ATP Packer. But the general idea is that this is that, that use case that Ma spoke about where we build these images and we want to be able to track other users of this image um, and, and be able to get the latest version without having to sort of go through the UI or through the cloud provider, in this case, in order to see what was the last image built. We're gonna use the data sources to automatically pull that information and build new images off of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Uh, do a quick um, validate on this image to make sure didn't mess anything up. Okay, and then we're gonna do a Packer build custom image source. So if this... And so while we wait for that, I quickly yes. wanna point out that you use validate. Uh, the other one that's good to use is format. Both of those will catch errors before you run your build process. Yes. Which I yes. think is a beautiful thing. Yes, absolutely right, yep. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's such a great thing. Um, and it also, yeah, it, it aligns everything very easy to read. So here we have this issue where, uh, you know, I, it already exists. Um, and that's because I'm sharing a name. Now, normally we can do a force command, you know, we can do packer build dash force, but I'm going to refrain from doing that because as we start to use HTTP packer more, we're starting to realize that the use of force is no longer relevant. Um, and I'm not going to go too much into details on that because I think that's a documentation you want to write. But the, the, what I will say is that when you're building for HTTP Packer, HTTP Packer now becomes your source of truth. And the idea of having a build name or rebuilding build, reusing build names is actually no longer relevant because we already have this idea of iterations built in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of my change because I really want to showcase the, the chaining more than I do want to, you know, showcase pushing to another HTTP bucket. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Oops, sorry. You can, if you go, if you go to the UI now, the iteration is will be there, but incomplete. Oh, okay. So the, uh, oh, so here we have custom. All right, and it's it, it's incomplete. Okay, thank you, Moss. Yes. So here we see. It's an example. Yes. That he was asked. Yeah. Oh. So now that you call that out, now I want to fix it. 
Uh, so next, accepted. <laughs> yes. So in that case, we're going to go ahead and say new. We're going to create this new um, image name. And let's see if this actually works. Um, we should, the same iteration should be updated and the image name should not matter. So here we are, we're building and I'm going to go back, oops, too far. So now I'm going to refresh here. Let's see. So we're in the building state. So that, that just sort of shows like image name is no longer relevant when it comes to HTTP Packer because HTTP Packer is using these, these, um, these fingerprints and iterations to sort of track an, you know, uh, an image. And so you could, that, that metadata that we once relied on specifically for within those cloud providers no longer becomes relevant. Okay, so while that's building, um, I, I wanna go over and show um, quickly um, the bread and butter of, of HTTP Packer and that's the ability to have multiple builds. So this one, and I, it's actually very funny in the sense that you said, um, Kareem, uh, an outdated image. Um, GCP, I'm using an Ubuntu 16.04 image that's no longer available. So that one failed for me. But you can, I can see, see that, why. Yeah, <laughs> I have on Azure and on Azure and, and um, Amazon. I have that's I have the Ubuntu 16.04 image built and available within these uh, these three regions. And this is where again we really start to see HTTP Packer come into play because now, as you you know, we could have one, we can have two, we can have three, five, however many sort of various cloud providers being represented um, within one image. And, and then we can use the data sources um, from, you know, from various Terraform configs to pull from this image from multiple cloud providers. And now you're getting this, this, this idea of, you know, like the ideal sort of um, situation of deploying the same image to multiple clouds, All right? Any so that was one question we got the other day, and I think this is a great one to re-ask, especially with our English-speaking audience. Does the Packer registry store all those images? So if I'm uploading, if I'm selecting US West one, US East one, uh, some EU ones and Asian ones, am I uploading three gigs of image per, uh, per region? Are we copying them over? How does that work? Great question. Moss, you want to take that one? Yeah, uh, no, HTTP Packer is not actually storing the image. It's only the metadata. The images, they are going to the cloud providers where Packer is building to. So HTTP Packer, only the only information about those images. That's the quick answer. Mm -hmm. That's also what gives, I think, a lot of people peace of mind because we're not storing the actual data for you. That's that's a good thing. That makes it a lot easier to adopt. It also makes it a lot easier if you're like me and you're pushing out a lot of images and not all of them complete, but the ones that do complete are not being three gigs of data being uploaded. It's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's important to sort of call out at this time to, you know, on top of that is that since ACP Packer doesn't manage or doesn't actually store those artifacts, um, and then we just point to them. The artifacts, once they're at, once they're you know within their respective clouds, they should be left untouched as best as possible, right? Because if you delete it there, HTTP Packer doesn't know that it's been deleted unless you, as an operator or you, a consumer of this, goes into HTTP Packer and either revokes that iteration or that image that is now referencing an image that no longer exists. So um, so, so again, it, it comes back to thinking about um, using HTTP Packer as a source of truth and then building these images and knowing that um, they, they, if you want to iterate on them, you don't have to delete the previous, you just keep building new images. Obviously that gets expensive after a while. So if you need to start cleaning up, then you can clean up the images there. And I think, you know, um, as we move forward, HTTP Packer will have support for webhooks and, and various things like that. But we also have the API where people can go in and script against these APIs to sort of say, hey, this, this image, which was referenced by this iteration should now be revoked because it's been deleted, right? So I think, you know, it's, it's a lot of uh, flexibility in how, we're, how users can consume HTTP Packer outside of just Packer by itself. 
Yeah, and the API documentation, in case someone is interested, is in the Hashcock Cloud Platform website. Yeah. Um, I'll get a link for that up in the show notes, but also maybe in the live chat. Kind of hoping our backend team can find that. If not, that's also cool. We'll have it for you later because you should be paying attention to this demo anyway. So also, we, like how we, we should call out here that this is an actual live demo. This is not pre scripted. This is not a recorded video. Uh, so if things don't work, then that's OK. If they do work, that's all the more impressive. So I am very curious. So here we can see on the on the multi cloud that we had two builds, or we have we have one for Azure successful build, and we had a successful build for AWS. So this is Azure, this is AWS, and the the GCP build is failed. So I'm I'm going to try something really quick to see if this works. Um, instead of 16.04, I'm going to throw it to 18.04, and and hope that that. Is enough just to please the, the folks watching the demo. Let's see. So I'm going to do a build again, and no, oh, that's the wrong one. Let's do this Packer build, and if it works, we should see just one build happening, and that should be specifically just for GCP. So here we see that hey, the build for ARM West has already been marked as done, so it's skipping. And this, this the build for AWS has also been done. So we're skipping that. And that's, again, we don't want to um, um, cause any drift. We want to make sure that what's already been built and what has already been stored in the HTTP Packer registry is left untouched. So Packer knows not to try to rebuild those because um, it's already been done. And if you specify a force, it's going to ignore it as well. But again, we want to try to move away from the use of force. Um, so now what's happening here is we're building that one image, that Google Compute West um, image. And once that's complete, we will have this iteration in its um, in a completed state. So we should see building. And, and then at this point, after once that's done, this will become V1. And then we can start to associate it to channels. And from the channels, we can use data sources to start building across multiple clouds. And just to sort of finish off the demo, I'm just going to switch back over to my terminal. Uh, if I can find the right terminal, there we go. Uh, this one, yep. Okay, and I'm going to just show the Azure uh, Terraform set. Let's see, oops, um, Azure scale set and main.tf. And in here, I'm using the same two data sources to get the image used by, um, that, that exists in Azure to be able to create this Azure scale set. Um, and for those not familiar with Azure scale sets, it definitely it wasn't familiar to me up until we wrote this demo. Um, it's, it's the equivalent of a scale group on AWS. So you can define how many number of servers you want within this group, and then it'll, it'll scale up and down for, you know, based off demand. Um, so, um, it's a nice thing to have, and it requires a little bit of resources. So we pair this up with Terraform. So Terraform takes our source image that we have that it gets from the data source, and we, you know, use that to deploy these resources on Azure um, within the scale set. Um, and just doing a quick Terraform apply. Well, won't show anything because I already built. So let's see. Um, I should probably go into the directory. While you do this, we're going to share some links in the chat for the Terraform resources that you can use with HCP Packer. Those are super helpful to make your infrastructure even more, um, basically more secure by not having any hard-coded references, by not having to do lookups that might have a filter that doesn't work out, but just by retrieving them in the way you would expect to be able to retrieve them. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. And I think, yeah, there's not really much to show here unless I change the value of our image, but I don't think I built a new image. So um, it's just, uh, just out of time. But um, 
Hmm. That's so here's yeah, this is not yeah. It's a really good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh actually, um this. This is a this is that custom bucket that we that custom image that we built off of the other base image. So what I would like to try is updating the Terraform to use this bucket just to see what happens. Um, and if it breaks, trust me, it works. Uh, and if it works, great. Um, so here, this is the information that we get for um, for Google Cloud. So now we see that we're in V1, and now we have the same. We have a Linux distribution across these three clouds that can be pulled and used either within Packer um, or within Terraform by using the, the data sources. So coming over one more time. This is very, I'm going to make one change here to main.tf. And instead of using the Windows Server bucket, I'm going to use a custom bucket, which we just built. And if oh, sorry, uh, Woken test PKR, I think. Let's see. Uh -oh. We'll find out if that's the right one in a second. Yeah. Okay. No. Uh, hmm, okay, so it didn't quite work uh, as I would hoped. I would have hoped. Oh, I know what. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. I got. I got. I went and got ahead of myself there. Um, I'll stop here on this failure to figure out what's happening. But I. Live debugging, folks. There you go. Has to happen. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, Wilkin thinks about that. Um, curious, Boss, can you give us a, a description or an explanation of the difference between channels and iterations? I saw that question come up earlier, and mm -hmm. I think it's a good one to ask because it explains the fundamental concepts of the registry. Yeah. All right. So, iterations that uh, we can say that is that they are different versions of the same image. So, for example, Wilkin was building the Windows ser server. If for some reason they have they need to update the image and add a new tool, he's gonna push that uh, that to the the ATP packer, and this is gonna create a new iteration, so a new version. So that's why you see there like V one, V two. These are the version numbers that are automatically incre incremented by ATP packer. So that that goes like v1, v2, v3, and so these are versions. And the channel they are we can see as a release channel. They are per bucket. So the Windows Server bucket has channels, and then you can assign each channel to a iteration to a different iteration. So, for example, use case is that you have three different channels: development, staging, and production, and you just follow those steps until the you can bless the iteration is ready for production. And then you just go update in the channels, like channel uh, iteration V1, for example, version V1. It's in dev, so you update the development uh, channel with uh, signing to the V1. And then once it's almost done, you go to staging and assign stage channel to V1. And then once it's ready for production, you assign the production channel to V1. So the channels, they are release channels, basically and they are per bucket and you can assign channels to different iterations from that bucket does that was it was it a good explanation is it I, I think this this makes a ton of sense we we might actually um highlight this bit because this question comes up a lot and i can see why it's um if you're not used to this kind of deployment flow then it definitely makes sense one other question that um I'm personally very curious about. Uh, well, can you mentioned earlier that we can set build variables uh, not just through the cloud provider uh, and also like image variables in general. I really liked what you just showed with uh, Google, like including the license for the image, which uh, 
might not show up for every image, but it's nice. But going back to build variables, what are some good use cases for that other than uh, tracking um, UUIDs and the likes? Would it make sense, for example, to put versions of the primary software of that image in there? Yes, I think I think and then I I think I, and that's that's the mindset that we took around the build variables or the build labels, if you will, where um, iterations. So build labels are specific to every iteration. So the idea is that as an image matures, you know, the software will change it, versions or and the, some software may be added or removed. So the in the ideal case, you would want to track um, software versions and. Uh, for for that particular iteration. So, for example, today I'm building this um, image using, um, you know, Python 2.7, um, you know, which is super old, but we're building it. And someone says, no, we should really be moving using three. Okay, we can go ahead and build this new iteration, update the image, build labels to have Python 3.0. I'm not sure exactly what the versions are, but I know, you know, in the three series. Um, and then we'll have that iteration. So when a user comes in, and they look at through the UI or they get the data source, they'll be able to see those labels and quickly identify um, what version of Python is being used in that image. Something we don't have support for right now, um, and Moss, correct me if I'm wrong, is being able to sort of use the data source to search through those images to say, hey, give me all the images that have Python version three or greater. And I think that's something that we would probably want to support in the future. And I think the other interesting thing is you mentioned this earlier, you hinted at it. Uh, all of this will also be retrievable through the API, right? So that means I could possibly say, even if I don't want to view this in the HCP console, I could write my own tooling around this and then ensure that my images meet my company's security standard, which I think you know, it, it happens all the time that uh, some tool finds vulnerability and that's, you know, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's open source and things like that happen, but it's good to have a good path to remediation and being able to know what you actually deployed, I think is the, the first step towards that. And I think uh, Paul in the comments uh, said it the right way. Terraform with Becca is, is indeed the best uh, combination. Um, nice. First of all, nice demo. Very excited about that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I, so, I'm sorry that the, the Azure didn't quite, the Azure Terraform didn't quite work out. Um, but uh, I, I think the, the only solution <laughs> here is that we might have to have you all back for, uh, for another office hours down the, down the road. But before we get to that part, I'm curious if people use HTTP Packer, what's the best way of getting feedback to you other than the GitHub issues? Are there other ways when, you know, I can imagine a lot of companies might do stuff on their own that they don't want to post in a public GitHub issue. Do we have good ways of people giving us feedback? Yeah, we do have a, a support channel, like in the, in the ATP support page where you can pick ATP Packer and give the feedback there. Like GitHub issues is always a, a good option as well, but that that would be straightforward for ATP Packer. Easy enough. Yeah, I like it. pretty easy. <laughs> so while we, um, we still have a couple of minutes left. So if you've been watching and you're wondering, you know, like, hey, uh, how does this thing, this flow workflow work in HTTP Packer? you know, can do about that, uh, then let us know. We'll, we'll have inputs for that. Uh, in the meantime, if you're using Terraform with HCP Packer, which you should really be using that way, uh, if you are on the HCP provider for Packer, at least version, I want to say version 18, and we're currently on 21, 018 and 021, then you'll have access to the uh, Packer image iterations, uh, the uh, the data sources for uh, iterations itself, for images, and a whole host of attributes that come with those resources, as with those data sources, which I think is 
is super exciting because that means you can have packability images and then consume some of that good data through Terraform. You can bring in your conditional work. You can probably get in some validation there and just make sure it works. And, you know, let us know how it works for you. Let me have a quick look at our questions in the meantime. It's a quiet crowd today. This happens sometimes. Also when we have demos, which is interesting because people are just glued to the whole experience of seeing things work out. You know, like it's it, it's no small feat making things work consistently all the time. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm curious if we can, um, look, can we get the, your screen back and have a look at some of the ways that you interacted with uh, Terraform with the uh, registry? Some of the way, well, okay, sounds good. Uh, so, do, 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 do. when you say the packet registry, mm -hmm. that? okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share, oh, share screen. Let's see. Uh, when, uh, hmm. Hmm. Okay. And we'll add that as soon as we see it here. So, there we go. okay. Okay, so this I just did a quick plan just to see what's going on. But how am I interacting with it? So all interaction from from Terraform to the Packer registry is through the data source. So we have a Terraform um, ACP provider available, and in there we have the beta release of the data sources for um, the Terraform provider. So in here we're getting this. Uh, HashiCorp HTTP provider. And I believe at the time I wrote this, this was the latest. I'm not sure if we had a new release yet, but um, so just the normal required provider. So when I do a Terraform init, it downloads that. I have my credentials being loaded through an environment variable, uh, through environment variable. So I'm not really specifying anything here on the provider side. And then setting up these data sources. And these data sources, I revert it back for those that were watching that saw me change it to custom. I revert it back to Windows Server um, as I try to figure out you know, what's happening. But yeah, uh, Kareem, uh, should I continue sort of explaining these fields or is there a specific question you had in mind? So I was mostly curious about the way you interact with this. Uh, and I think the lines 30 through 35 are really the key here. And to me, this this just works. I mean, obviously, you can drive bucket name and cloud provider region through variables. Uh, you haven't done that here, but that's totally possible. I think it's actually good that you didn't because it helps make it more visible uh, for the demo. But of course, if you're writing Terraform, think about which things you're going to reuse. Region is usually a variable or should be a variable because mm -hmm. that removes a couple of questions there. Yes. So I'm curious, when you, um, when you do a build through HCP Packer and you configure your Packer template to have various build variables in there, are you able to use um, functions like the UUID v4 or a timestamp in there? Or maybe I think env uh, is something that I can also use as a Packer function. Are those things that I can have in there and stored with my image? Yeah, so I think, um, so here, so I think this is probably a good time to, what is this, is the Azure? Mm, this is, this is going to take long. It might, let me, um, let me, let me go over to the, uh, the, the, uh, the multi-cloud for a second. And I'll, I'll run a build on this because I, one of them missed three, so one of the three is bound to finish first, so we can see it. So let's see what we have here. Here we have, fortunately for us, it's a clean slate, right? We have no build labels here. So I want to do some build labels here, and and I'm just going to assign it to this thing called labels, right? So this variable called labels. So let's go ahead up here and let's create some labels. Create this variable. I'm going to call this labels. And here we're going to say a type is going to be of map 
uh, string. And the default. I like the validation you're building in there just by defining map string. <laughs> Let's see. We have a <laughs> yeah. It's it's good. It really it really helps to specify your types. You know, I mean, the very, the command line will do its best to figure out what it is, but when we explicitly state what it is, you know, it, it really helps the parser, and we can give really good um, validation around that. Um, so uh, here, what are we gonna have? You know, what's interesting is I've never actually tried this. Um, what I'm about to show. So here, we're just gonna say home. We're gonna call this. Um, Home, right? And in here, work. We're gonna find out, uh, and then just you know we'll give it we'll give it um, test is equal to demo. We have we have this variable called labels and. We are setting them down here. So we should have this labeled information. And let's validate. So let's do a packer format on this. Uh, let me go, let me go up a directory because I am in multi-cloud. Multi-cloud and packer we do our, our font. Okay, so that's good. And then so um, the packer validates. Yeah. Okay. Great. So let's let's see what happens here. Packer three, multi cloud. Oh, it's gonna error because we already so we already built. I mean, this is a Git repository, so I've already built using this fingerprint. So we calculate the fingerprint from the Git SHA. So. And this is beautiful because that actually most Packer build processes take a while because you know you're putting a lot of stuff in there. So I'm, I appreciate when Packer tells me, "Hey, this you've already done this." Especially if you're switching context a lot, you might go like, "Hey, you know what? I'm just going to rerun this build." And normally Packer would go like, "Hey, give me give me 15 minutes. Be right back." Yeah. So so here we have this new shot, this new Git shot. So um, let me see. It should now that we do a good. Build, it should use that SHA when it starts to build. So here we have, so um, it looks like my West build failed, could not find default credentials. Okay. Um, so maybe I, I'm in, yeah, okay, I'm in a different shell. Hmm, let me see what's happening here. I'm, I don't know if I have my credentials loaded here. So let's let's see. Still a clear error message. Yes. In the meantime, a uh, question for you, Moz. Is HTTP Packer free? Michael asked that on the uh, in YouTube. Now that we are in public beta, yes, it's free. Once we go to GA, we, st we will still have a free tier. Uh, of course, there will be a limited usage compared to the a paid, uh, a paid version, but you can still take advantage of it. So yeah, there is, it is free. free with a limit usage. I think that makes a ton of sense. If yeah. you're doing this on a small scale, give it a try, get used to it. Maybe your team is even small enough that you can use it for free. And if you're at a bigger scale, let's talk. Yeah, exactly. I think Michael says it uh, beautifully here. You should definitely try it out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, yeah. So here I'm just going to quickly show what we did on the label side. So the labels automatic. So labels. So what's interesting, I, I before I go on the labels, uh, before I go into what we see here, um, labels are we the, the user labels are since we add them very early on, Packer can send them immediately. So as we start to build, we'll see that the labels start to show up here, um, and then. After the builds are complete, any of the user gener any of the system generated labels will get added on. Um, if you right now there is no support for um, sorry, there's no support for removing labels. I think that's something we want to you know think about in the future or may think about. But right now, once a label is set on an iteration, it is there. Um, I've not tried overriding a label. I would be curious to know um, what it. Chances are it works, but 
I've never actually tested it to say that it works without, 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 with no issue, but we can see that the labels that we defined in our variables, one coming from an environment variable, in this case, home, and the other one, just a, a static string that we added to this variable and they get you know look, um, added to each of the builds as in the you know a, a individual key value um, for that build i think that is very useful so on the topic of labels not michael lunga but michael hanley asks can the build labels use for each thank you both michaels for being here yes um so it should um it, it's you're treating it like a regular well Yes, because it, it's regular HTL syntax. So uh, for each statement would work if you had some sort of map there. I mean, you want to iterate it through, you should be able to set those. Beautiful. And if you're doing that kind of stuff for each with built labels, reach out to us, reach out to me. Uh, I'm at Casey on Twitter. I'm curious what you're building and how you're building it. Promise we won't show it on the stream unless you really want us to. But I think for us, it's also interesting to see what are you thinking there? What, what's the data model that you're basically building around your image? What are you storing in there? Uh, I know for us, I worked at a company where we put a lot of stuff into tags, especially for AWS and um, Azure, things down to the level of what was the build machine and what was the IP of the secret store that we used to make sure that it was actually the right environment. Everything was still IP based, so it helped a lot to know that, oh, this build was failing because it was connected to the wrong secrets backend. There's a lot of cool things that you can do around that. And I think we'll, we'll talk more about this in the future. For us, uh, we're at the end of today's stream. Before we go, Moss, Wilkin, any final words? Well, for me, thanks everyone for watching. I hope we were able to demo and show all the good stuff from HCP Packer and also answer all of your questions. And I'm looking forward for the next office hours. Hope we have another one. Oh, we'll, we'll definitely have more of these. I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to have them. Uh, I always love audience interaction where we get good questions. Michael brings up a good uh, point for the future. Uh, Sys benchmarks are going to get a lot easier if you know on the outside of what is in your image. Uh, also, what a word to, to end on, Sys benchmarks. I mean, <laughs> thank you, Michael. It's, security is important, but usually it is not the funnest part of this process. <laughs> but it is still very important. Thank you for keeping us honest there, Michael. Uh, with that, I would say we'll see you all in the next year. Today was the last community office hours of 2021. We'll be back in January and we'll be back with you two and maybe some other people from the Packer team for the next uh, release, which I believe is going to be 1.8.0. Actually, it will be 1.7.9 before we get to 1.8.0. 1.8.0 has a lot of a lot of goodness around it so we you know we have to wait for that but we can do another office hours when that when that drops so it, it, i i think i mean you had me at a lot of goodness in there it, it, i'm <laughs> i'm down for that i mean you know like the holidays are coming gifts are coming but then the real gifts come right like stuff that makes your working work environment easier so uh yes uh definitely up for that and with that let's smile and wave awesome See you.